Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to a brand new video, Football Manager, and uh, yeah, I said I was going to move things forward, I have, they have gone as well as things were going, it's been brilliant. As you can see here, we'll look at the league table. We'll go through the results in just a second, but the league table is pretty, pretty viewing. We are top of the league, 12 points clear. Sunderland and Coventry have a game in hand. Sunderland more than anyone at the moment. Um, so it could be a nine-point gap. Yes, that's that's correct maths. But either way, a nine-point gap. We're at November. We've played really well. And as you can see, still unbeaten. And the results itself speak for themselves. So obviously the 6-0 against Wigan was the last time out. We beat Lincoln, Rotherham, Ipswich, a draw against Brentford, Gillingham beaten, Hull a draw. We had a couple of draws in a row there and I wondered if we were going to sort of go off on one and then we've won five in a row. Really good results in there. Exeter 5-1, Accrington 3-1. Lots of clean sheets as well, which is really nice. We're playing so, so well. As you can see, Bryn Mulvaney is our top scorer this year. 25 goals in 23 appearances in the league. That is um, I mean, it's incredible. It really is incredible. Oliver Batista Meyer is there with 12 as well. And if we look at the assists, he tops it with 11. Jan Zambarek has got eight, though. Zambarek is having another stellar year, perhaps his best one so far. And hopefully it continues. Average rating wise, of course, Bryn Mulvaney up there. Dennis Politics had a really good year. I should mention him. He's had a better year than I ever expected him to have. Seven goals, two assists, two player of the matches. Today, then, two quite interesting games, really. Colchester has sat there in fifth in the league and they've played quite well so far. 11 wins, four draws, five losses. For a side like Colchester, that's really, really good. And uh, they've won their last two, so it'll be a very interesting game. And then after that, we're going to play Tunbridge Angels. We're now in the Vanarama National League South. They've rose up the divisions since the start of the game, which would have been 1920, which would have been that one. Uh, so, no, they've always been in the South. That was a lie. That was a lie. But either way, FA Cup first round against the Minnow. I could change the squad about as well, so we could see some newer faces, maybe. Um, but... Things are just going so well. This will be the team today then, and it's more or less the best team we've got. Not best team, but a settled 11. Maybe one change is all I'd say. But we have, I mean, I say a settled 11. A settled 15 is probably better to say, because you have the 11 that you see there, and then you've got the likes of Holmes that comes in. Thomas and Casey gets lots of games. Darcy gets games in terms of on the bench anyway. Reese Williams is there. Um, Lucas Bayer, of course, would normally be first choice. So you've got this 15, 16 players that are regularly playing. The rest aren't, admittedly. Callum Gribben not played a minute of football this year. I really didn't expect that, but the, the fact that we could bring in Batista Meyer means we don't need Callum Gribben. It's harsh because he had a banner year last year. But this is the starting 11 today, then. It's going to be Kelleher in goal. Should, should mention on Kelleher, he's having a really good year. 12 clean sheets in 21 games. Really, really good. Helped by the fact that he's got some banner defenders in front of him. I like the word banner today. Not not like Bruce, not the Hulk. Mason will play right back. He's been swapping with Jordan Thomas, but now Mason will get the start today. It's Pearson and Cardozo in the middle. Of course, usually, like I say, it would be Lucas Baja, but he's he, he could do with the rest. Actually, I think he's fit enough. There's been a few days between the games. I'm going to start Lucas Baja. Cardozo next to him. Again, he's been a, an underrated player in this team. He's, he's actually declining with our training, but underrated player, 7.2 weight. Only the one goal, but a real big reason why we're keeping so many clean sheets is Oscar Cardoso, Goncalo Cardoso. I don't know why I said Oscar. I know the name, but I don't know why. Anyway, Miles Kenlock starts at left back. He's been an ever-present, it feels like, so it's good that he gets the game time. Zambarek and Longstaff is your midfield. Matty Longstaff, again, having a really good year, four goals. One assist, two player of the matches. He's suddenly starting to score goals for us, which is really good. Um, on the right-hand side, Politic, Levert behind the striker, Batista Meyer, and up front, of course, Bryn Mulvaney, who, let's be honest, is on course for 50 the way he's going. He is incredible. I've played through the last month, literally like this morning, so I'm, I'm on a roll of what I'm playing. And I've got to be honest, the results over the last few games, apart from the Exeter one, are good. But the performances aren't quite there. We're getting a little bit, not lucky, because we do deserve it. We're not taking as many chances as we were. We seem to be scraping a little bit. So it's going to be interesting against Colchester in good form, fifth in the league, see what happens. Batista Meyer over a free kick. He scored a 
belter earlier in the year, goal of the month uh, winner. Oh, he nearly did it again. It was a similar thing where he's looked for that far post and he bent it round. The keeper didn't move it. It the top corner. It was a super goal. It didn't happen there, and I think that'll be the end of the highlight. Oliver Batista Meyer is a sort of hit and miss player. He could have a six point two for you, or he could, or he could have a nine point six. It purely depends. He we we are always better off starting him. Jesus Christ, that was scary. He's always better off starting because he is a very very good player, but. He does have these odd games where he's just not really turning up for you. So it's going to be interesting to see what he does on camera today because this is the big game. Hassan Ali's in and Kelleher makes the save. This is the big game where this is the first choice 11 I'm going to play. I am going to make changes for Tom Bridge Angels. Eddie Brown, I think, might get a start. Hey there, we're sort of midway through the first half just afterwards and we haven't really saw a lot from us so far. Maybe we will now. It's Mulnani, Mulvani who picks it up. I've done that on camera. I haven't done it once when I've been speaking about him in my head. That's a weird thing to say. Politic, anyway, he's been a real, real shot for me this year. How good he's been with the better players around him. He couldn't find a cross, but Mason's kept it alive. Zambarek for Lever. Is it did? Oh, yeah. Oh. Dennis Politic, who flashes it wide. It's a good opportunity, to be honest with you. It's a good opportunity. Good ball over the top here. Batista Meyer might be in. Batista Meyer forces the save. And Mulvaney misses an absolute sitter. Into the second half we go, then. I've given them a little bit of a kick. Mulvaney's on a 6.3, not playing well, but a goal here could change it all. Batista Meyer swings in the free kick. Cardoso was up there. Bayer is fan Batista Meyer again, who's through. He's hit the post. Mulvaney, though, has scored. They've made an absolute mess of it at the back. I think it's also 2 2 with a mistake. XQPR, I think. And Mulvaney gets his 24th, 26th, sorry, goal of the season in all competitions. And I think it might be his 24th in the league. It is incredible, or 25th. I don't know. I'm losing count of how many scoring. What have they done at the back there? You can't be doing that with Mulvaney about. And we've managed to hack it clear. And there's another mistake at the back, which lets in Mulvaney and uh, Evtimov. Evtimov in the Colchester goal makes a good save. We can go 14 points clear of Sunderland here. I think they have a game in hand, possibly two. I don't know if they're playing. Are they losing? What's happening? They're drawing with Bradford. Dylan Levitt's on a 6.4. He's going to come off. Uh, Ronan Darcy can come on. And Andy Holmes will come on on the right-hand side for Dennis Politic on a 6.5. Matty Longstaff's on a 6.4 as well. Ronan Darcy was really one I thought would leave the club in the summer. He didn't. He's still here. He's not getting the game time he wants still. But what can you do? I offered you out, mate. I couldn't get the right deal for you. There's nothing we could do about it. So Saya here to Pell. It's only 1 0, so it's a little bit dangerous. We've dropped a couple of points here and there by not quite putting teams away. I'm hoping that doesn't happen here today. Sawyer to Dreher. They're keeping the ball well, but are they going to do anything with it is the question. Hassan Ali does well there. Hassan Ali still, and it's a penalty. And all of a sudden, whether he scores or not, I'm going attacking because we're at our best when we're attacking. I have a feeling he'll score. We dominate the game annoyingly. Dreher does score. It's 1-1. And now, boys, there's there's a job to do. Demanded a little bit more. We're not playing badly at all. We are not playing badly at all. We're not amazing, but we're not playing badly at all. We're just not putting the teams away. Sunderland have scored, so they lead now. So it won't be a 14-point gap. It might just be, well, a lot less than that. Time is absolutely flicking through. I... I haven't really got a change I could make. It's the best players we've got out there, more or less. But nothing is happening. Walsall 1, Colchester 1. There's a late chance. Now then, this is going to be interesting. They've got it there with Ev Tamoff. And uh, hmm, it's going to be very interesting. If we can get a header on that, Mason has to be very careful. Niall Mason's mistake. Oh... I saw the unbeaten run go up in my absolute arms then. Batista Meyer's going to bring it forward. Can we actually break from this? This is a bit Watford Leicester. Can Batista Meyer get across? And he has done. It's Holmes. It's over. And with that, it will just be a point. A quite disappointing one. Colchester are having a good year, but I feel like it's a game we should have won. We should have won. We've had some decent chances. We haven't taken them. Warsaw won. Colchester won. Frustration. And now, after Sunderland won at Bradford, they are 10 points behind with a game in hand. So we've dropped two points there that may come to be important at the end of the season. I don't know. Anyway, we'll get it out of our system. We'll carry on. And uh, oh, Marvin Jones is scoring goals, by the way, for Stockport. OK, then here we are. FA Cup first round day. And as you can see, we've made 11 changes. We are changing the team around. We're getting some game time for some people. It's a team that I still believe... Sh 
shush now, shush now. I, I'm going through the team. Don't be rude. It's a team that I think should be able to beat Tunbridge Angels. So we'll go through it now. He's going to give a start to Ainsley Pierce. He came in as number two last year. He hasn't played really many games. He played a cup game this year, none last. So, well, he'll get a start today in the cup. In front of him, of course, there's going to be Jordan Thomas at right back. Pearson and Williams, he sent about partnership with Sean Mackey on the left. Paris McGoma will play deep line playmaker today with uh, Russ Sykes playing Mazzala. We're going to play Andy Holmes at right back, right back, right wing. Ronan Darcy will play behind the striker. Casey, who I actually have been really impressed with this year. Two goals um, in 12 appearances. A lot of those off the bench, to be fair to him. Um, he's played quite well, so he will start on the left-hand side and up front. Eddie Brown gets an opportunity today. It's going to be interesting to see if he takes it. He's, he hasn't come to me yet expecting game time, but I don't know what I'm going to say when he does because there is no way I can drop him out. There's no way I can drop out Bryn Mulvaney. And Eddie Brown has been the unfortunate victim of the entire thing. Whoa, 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 whoa. What's this? What's this? A square pitch. A square pitch. This is... I can't even get my match stats. This is disgusting. Can it go? I can't even get... Let's put it... Oh, my God. We're going to have to put it down here. Match stats are gone. Match stats... We're playing on a hockey ring. It's not even a square pitch. It's a rectangle pitch. It's ridiculous. Eddie Brown's in, though. Can he punish them for their pitch? Yes, he can. And that was a really, really good finish from Eddie Brown, I've got to say. You see it many times on Football Manager when they're taking that touch into the box, but the angle's quite tight. They take the shot and it's saved. Eddie Brown takes the extra touch just to knock it around the goalkeeper and drop it into the corner. Five minutes in, this could be comfortable. Caught free kick in here. I thought it was a corner because of where it was and we have made it too. It's an own goal from Tyler Inns. There is no room there for him to get away with anything. It was whipped in by Casey. Good free kick in. Pearson's hit the crossbar and it's just sort of bounced off Inns who's lying on the floor like he's tired. And he gets punished for it. It's 2-0 and uh, Paul Tunbridge are having a bad day. That's what they get for having a stupid bloody pitch. This is ridiculous. We play a wide game. It's impossible to play a wide game on this pitch. It's ridiculous. Lambert whips it in. And Simo, Khalid Simo, pulls one back for Tunbridge. You've made yourself a legend there. Okay, highlight at the left-hand side. Mackie can throw it to goal from there. It's ridiculous how, how narrow these pitch this pitch is. It's ridiculous. Thomas whips it in and Casey grabs his fourth of the season. Joel Casey in with the goals again. He is taking every minute he can, Joel Casey, right now. Every start he gets, whether it's against Tunbridge Angels or Hull City or anybody, he is looking to make an impact and he's done just that there. We'll have a look at this again. Thomas whips it in first time and Casey on the volley finds the bottom corner. Tunbridge Angels one. Warsaw 3. Now I'm in a weird situation because usually I'd look at 60 minutes in and possibly making some changes. But in doing that, I'm bringing, off, I'm bringing on a player who is going to start the next game in theory. So these players deserve minutes and they're going to get 90 minutes unless there's an injury, etc. As far as I'm concerned. Darcy has the ball. Holmes to Thomas. And a fourth goal might just be a bit of a confidence boost for some of these players. Magoma, Thomas... Really good keep ball right now. Good ball from Magoma. And it's Joel Casey in behind. And he does score on the rebound. Two for him on the day. Tunbridge Angels one. Warsaw four. Joel Casey is an impressive number 40 for us. I didn't like giving him 40 when I did it. He was It was genuinely because he signed so late. It was the only number, like the, the, the smallest number available. But I now, I quite like the idea of him having number 40. He's a young player, but he's just impressing. Impressing so much. Time is ticking through, and as I say, I'm not going to make a change. Everyone's playing quite well, which is what you'd expect from this sort of game, and we have looked comfortable, really comfortable. I probably expected a bit more from Andy Holmes or Roland Darcy, to be honest. A game like this, they could really take advantage of. They haven't. Joel Casey certainly has, and he's on a hat trick, by the way, if something comes from this. It's pulled all the way back for Sean Mackey to rifle in his first goal for the club. Really, really good finish. You really wonder why Tombridge are defending so deep there from the throw-in. It's probably got something to do with the narrow pitch, actually. And in the end, Holmes picks the right pass. And Mackey's finish is, well, really, really good. And uh, a 5-1 win, probably a little bit harsh on Tombridge. We haven't dominated and dominated as such. But that's a weird thing to say. We've won the game 5-1. Everyone's on a 0.7 rating apart from the goalkeeper because goalkeepers anyway good performance particularly from Mackey 
and Casey, the left-hand side, was really good. And we are through to the FA Cup second round. It's going to be interesting to see who we get. No big boys are in it, of course. No Premier League or Championship teams are in the second round. So it's going to be interesting to see if we get an easier game again. I quite like it, to be honest with you. I'd quite like an easier game. We can get some game time to people. And then possibly a big one um, in the third round. Paris Magoma wants football. He's going to have to be patient, I'm afraid, because... People are playing well, and I don't want to mess with the status quo. Stick with the status quo. Okay, then, there it is then. Warsaw draw Chester in the FA Cup second round. Chester, now a League 2 team, so it's not as easy as you would think. They've had a, a rise up from the Vanarama National League North, actually, and won two promotions in a row, won the playoffs. No, they won the league, actually, to get to the the uh, lead to Bernard Morley in charge. So that's really interesting. Mark Waters is their key player. He looks quite good, actually. For the level, he's quite good. Really good physical stats. I'm going to scout him. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Chester, a team that was apparently only founded nearly, well, 10 years ago in real life. But that's, oh, well, they're known as Chester City prior to that. I mean, I'm not sure what the difference is. I'm sure somebody in the comments could tell me if they want to. But... A pretty comfortable game. And I think that's where we're going to come back, actually, looking at it. Because we've got Colchester, Coventry and Ipswich. And then we're into that second round. And then a Brentford game. I promised you Brentford last time. We didn't do it. And I said possibly the second game could be more important. So we'll find out. Chester and Brentford to start off December and to be the next episode. And see where we're at going into the final final six months of the season or so. Final, uh, yeah, about that. That's the end of the episode then, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed it. It's been a... Okay, episode. A Tunbridge win was expected. Well, a win over Tunbridge was expected. And Colchester, again, I feel like it's a game we should have won. We didn't quite get the job done. So we need to bounce back from that. Coventry and Ipswich, two difficult looking games in terms of the league table. So if we can get two wins from that, we will be back on course for a comfortable title win. We've been very good this year. We're still unbeaten in all competitions. Ignore that Carabao Cup first round. We lost on penalties. As far as I'm concerned, we weren't beaten. We didn't lose the game. That's what matters. I wonder when that's going to come to an end. It could happen in those three games. It could happen in one of these. I guess we're going to find out next episode. It's going to be an interesting one. So if you like the video, like the video. Subscribe to the channel for more. And until next time, peace.